It's Local Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz. We're joined today by Mike Lindberry. He is with Ventura County's Fire Department, and it's been a hot summer. This is a map of wildfires in mid-August, and there are several on this map. I mean, I'm counting seven, and that's a lot of fires to have burning at the same time, and it hasn't gotten much better since. You know, that's that's true, Brad, and, and those seven fires a, a, actually represent some very significant fire behavior. People have been saying that Southern California has been ready, uh, ready to burn for a long time. It hasn't happened because we haven't had the ignition sources, but this summer, um, it, it has begun. What were those sources? You know, there were, there were uh, human-caused fires. There were mechanically caused fires. What we didn't have were any natural or lightning caused no fires. No lightning strikes. No. But this is what I understand is going on. We simultaneously are facing a drought. Mm -hmm. We are facing increased heat as a result of global warming or otherwise. That creates a situation where without enough water, the trees aren't producing sap. And without the sap, the bark beetle can infest the trees. And so we have a huge number of trees that are dying off. And if I can continue, I've learned a little bit. We did have some rain this spring and summer, which created a little bit of growth, but not enough. So those died and we have even more uh, foliage that's ready to burn. Well, you've been doing your homework. I tried. Uh, uh, that's a great job, but mm, I can add a few things go, to that. Yeah, I'm, no, I'm no smart guy. We have had rain in Southern California, but we actually had less rain this year than we had last year. Really? Yes, and last year we only had half of our normal rainfall totals. They're a little better off in Northern California right. and some areas of the, of the Sierras, and we might think that takes them out of danger, but it really doesn't. Because what we're dealing with there is we still have a lot of standing dead trees. And so those trees are still, you know, they're gonna be vulnerable to burning. I have to tell you, I recently went uh, and visited uh, the Sequoia National Forest. Mm -hmm. How beautiful and yeah. majestic. Yeah. But sir, on the way there, I saw huge patches of standing dead yes. trees. Yeah. I, I, it was spooky. Yeah. And I asked my guide what's going on and he said, well, that's part of the 66 million trees that have been dying since California was struck by this cataclysmic drought. Right, and if you see it from the air, it's right. even, uh, I mean, it will just blow you away when you look at the amount of dead trees that are out there. And, and it's a couple of things going on. One, the bark beetle that you mm -hmm. mentioned. But two, with that lack of precipitation that we're getting, the vegetation, including the trees, are fighting for what's in the ground. I see. So um, as we look at here in Southern California area, or we look up there, anything that's growing or still alive is fighting for that remaining uh, moisture that they can pull out of the ground. So the weaker trees, the weaker plants right. are all going to eventually, you know, perish. And that gives us more fuel. And when we have that drier dead fuel, there is more energy released when we get a fire. And when there's more energy released, the faster the fire grows. And as I understand, some of these fires were so dramatic that they created what's known as fire natos. Have yes. you heard about that term? I've seen fire Sharknado. Nados. Yeah, uh, fire you know, I, I NATO? think that's it. yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I've seen them out there, and what does it look like? It, it it's very impressive. And yeah, well um, stated. It's it's very impressive to see, and um, I'll give you. I Please. was in Lytle Canyon okay. once on a fire. On it was the that? Uh, Grand Prix fire. It's up off I-15 area oh. where the um, um, I think it was the old fire recently burned. Um, it was actually not the old fire, but was one of the recent fires okay. up in Wrightwood. Wrightwood, got it. And mm -hmm. um, it was it was really incredible. I, I saw a bird fly into a, a stand of, of dead of dead um, okay. you know vegetation, and as the fire came through, I saw this tornado above it develop, and then just go huge, right next to us. And it was almost, a fire tornado. Yeah, it was almost like a phoenix, you know, rising out of the you know out of the ashes and. Um, yeah, those fire tornadoes, you look at that, and that's an indicator for us that, you know, we have some very dry fields, some very dangerous conditions. And those are really what we're I looking at. I want to ask you, though, about fire. Mm -hmm. Because I remember when I was a kid, we always saw the Smokey the Bear campaign. Mm -hmm. And there was this notion, the minute a fire hits, get it out. Somehow extinguish it. Yeah. 
now I understand there are some folks that believe some fires we should let burn. Is that fair? You know, I, I think it's, um, it's like when you manage anything out there, there are going to be different tools in your toolbox mm -hmm. to take care of the different issues that you want to deal with. And truthfully, some of our fuel beds, that's what we call basically places where vegetation mm -hmm. is growing, um, need to have some clearing done. Um, and so sometimes it is a good tool to get in there and burn that out. Now, but letting, we, okay. letting a wildfire burn and burning that out are two different issues. But let's presume, for argument's sake, that the wildfire is not near any and there are no homes, mm -hmm. the, the, there's no risk of buildings being burnt down, of people's mm -hmm. lives being lost. Is there an advantage, I don't know the answer, to letting it burn, controlled, yes. and then not, clear, not clearing it, you know, let that kind of, let, let nature do its thing and let growth come out of it. When we do that, there, you are getting in so deep into you know the science of I'm fire sorry. right now. And that's <laughs> right. okay. That's okay. Yeah. We would do that when we have the opportunity. But what we look for, you can't just let a wildfire take off, especially in conditions yeah. like we have, uh -huh. because the harder that thing burns and the hotter it burns, right. the more damage it's going to do to the soil. So we prefer to do it under controlled conditions, like prescribed burning, prior to when you know the high fire season when you know in the in the spring months is when we like to get this done mm -hmm. and we'll take care of that and what we like is to have a nice mosaic on the ground where we don't burn everything out we just take care of some of the surface fuels some of the downed and you know down and dead fuels that are there and leave a lot of habitat and leave root systems so we don't get right. you know a lot of uh, debris flow or mudslides how does the rest of the year look in our final moments okay it it's really we're going to be in high fire season for a while, I can and, tell you that. And you'll come back and talk more about it. I would love to. He is Mike Lindberry. He is with Ventura County's Fire Department. My name is Brad Palmer, and stay safe, local edition.